I'm Nick Torres. I'm Jess Davis. Barbara Capiso. And Peter Boynton. My main motivation is I don't like the fact that a developer with no Nantucket ties can come in under the guise of a 40B, bypass all of the zoning that the rest of us have to pay attention to, bypass everything else AGC, HDC makes us pay attention to. The house next door, they can't even put a shed on because they're over their total, total, you know, square footage. But he can cram 90 parking spaces, 160 units, and only 10% of which are low income. So we hide behind the guise of doing this to help the low right, income housing. Right. That'll be 10 units and five units will have to come from off island. So there'll be five off island families coming here to meet his quota for his off island, for his low, it just, it's just a ruse. And I don't like the fact that he's gonna try and get away with it. Cool. How about you, Jess? How do you feel right now? Um, I feel honestly hurt by this guy. My family and I have grown up here since I was young. My parents raised my brother in the cottage in front of our house next door and built another house in the back. And they moved in here and built this property in the sense that nothing like this could go in next door. That was the rules and that was the guidelines they followed. They wanted to they be in a small... They chose to buy two acre zoning property over something yep. else so that this wouldn't happen as they got near the age to retire. And that's exactly what's happening. And now my parents are about to retire and feel like they can't because this guy's coming in and what they got their house appraised for is diminished by half. We're going to make more people come here that are going to try to get jobs year round and it's going to be... Uh, a quest for more 40 bs and more 40 bs and already we are the fastest growing county in the state and I don't think that's a good idea. 40 bs on this island why not try to take over the rugged Scott 40 b that four or five houses were made in and now it's just a ghost abandoned town. They ran out of money. They, they ran out of money. What if you run out of money here and this turns oh, into three buildings up with nobody in them and it just looks like a pile of garbage on Surfside Road. At what yes, point do we reach the saturation point? You've got the Pasden 40B development is going to be over 400 units. You've got Rugged Scott which failed to finish. It's only halfway done. You have Sage's Path, Mayakamic Village, Mayakamic Village Phase 2. We're all within about a square mile. At what point do we say it's enough in one area? It's time How much to infrastructure stop. do we have to overload? It's time to slow down yeah. to get a study. We need to solve our own not have someone from off island try to say he's and solving it and he's not solving it. My name's Rick Atherton. Um, I'm here as a citizen, but I'm also a member of our board of selectmen. You know, I always appreciate when Nantucket citizens come out, express their point of view to make sure, in this case, a developer understands, or when the board or the planning board understand issues of importance to our citizens. They just arrived. The state just arrived. This is their site review. And so they're going, this is Mass Housing Partnership, who's the lender for the 40B development. And so they're going to determine if this is an appropriate site for a 40B. We feel that it's not. It's too big, too dense, too excessive, too extreme for this neighborhood. Because there are certain part of the islands that are great for developments like this, and then there are certain parts of the island that are not. And we feel that this is not the area that it should go in. I'm DJ McKinnon. Uh, I recognize actually quite a few people in the crowd here. Uh, and with me today is Josh Swirling. Josh is from Bowler Engineering. I'm from Atlantic Development, and our, our entity that is actually looking to develop this property is called Surfside Commons LLC. That's the legal entity that's uh, filed for the Pell application. Uh, with the change in the plan, the plans we'll show you have actually reduced that unit count down now to 56 units with 14 at the moderate rate affordable range. The idea is to be able to come around the back of these units. There's a few garages. Total number of parks is uh, 92 on the surface. Now, typically with a process like this, it continues to evolve, and especially as we start to work more with the town, you know, we see this evolving more, trying to get more of a Neotucket look to it. We've added in, you know, landscaping and other features. The, the two on the property today, you know, we do have a single family home uh, with a garage. Uh, we're looking to actually turn those into covenant homes that would be relocated somewhere else, uh, you know, on the island. I'm happy to answer any questions or take people uh, for a walk, maybe as those questions conclude, uh, and go from there. DJ, this provision, what is the 
tallest wind tunnel? This, this tallest, that hasn't changed. So that's still at 44 feet. And what is uh, current zoning here? Uh, I believe the zoning's 30. Yeah. But and the whole goal is to try to increase the level of affordable housing uh, on the island. That's the whole goal? Excuse me? That's the entire goal? Well, I, 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 if you want to explain the statute more, you can, but I, I understand the goal of the statute I mean, is the, to try the to... entire goal is to have just affordable housing right here. So, so our, our specific proposal now is, is 56 units. I can explain a little bit more. It's 56 units. Out of those, 14 would, uh, would be, uh, fall under the affordable section of, uh, what that translates to is people that would have incomes generally between about fifty-five and eighty thousand dollars would qualify for the affordable units. So I, I'm happy to generally answer the questions, but the, the, the actual detail on, on all of that is, is all available online. So out of, out of the fifty-six, the, the other units would be market rate units. We're projecting the market rate rents to run roughly between two thousand and thirty-three hundred in that range. Um, and in a three-bedroom apartment at thirty-three hundred a month. situation where we're going to have eight people living in an apartment uh, won't have we're not going to have eight cars per unit so we can put we can put we're allowed to put restrictions in place as long as they conform to the uh, to the HUD requirements which we will do we'll apply those to all of the apartments and we're going to have a full-time on-site manager that's going to live here and saying that you're going to limit it it just doesn't work when you can't afford the rent it just doesn't work out here they're going to have other people in there you're going to need it. In addition, we have one code enforcement officer, which is really our town problem, because as we expand all our affordable housing and on other um, buildings, we don't have anybody to enforce this. I live across the street from a 40B, one of the more recent 40Bs, and I have a strong belief that there is, they're in violation. DJ, how many bedrooms are in the 56 total unit? I, I don't know off the top of my head. Again, it's in our information, but we have a mixture of ones, twos, and threes. Uh, probably, I'm guessing it's 110, 120, something in that range. This type of proposal, it, it's all done with uh, private funding. So for us, this is a, you know, it's a significant investment. We want to protect our investment. We want it run well. We want it managed well. We want an on-site management. We want that to work. We're not relying on any state or federal subsidies to make this work, so it only works if we do it and manage it and manage it properly and that is why we want to have our own on-site manager have those regulations put in place what, what we've kind of found with this proposal is uh we we've, we've purposely set up a social media site because we're getting a significant amount of input through that avenue and most of the people that want to talk to us about their rental needs want to do it on an individual basis which we're happy to do but as we do that uh you know we are going to keep their information confidential rental needs are different than affordable housing so you're just creating people who want to visit for the summer and not really addressing our uh, housing shortage uh, of affordable housing. Yeah. And, and as it stands, if there are 14 of the units that are affordable, we still have to import people who qualify for those and not even offer island residents. We're an island. You can't drive to another community. It's a plane or a boat to get here. We are unique. We are not any other town in the state. Um, I think it needs to be looked at a little differently. Is there anything about filing this at a 40B? that uh, puts a restriction on how long before you sell the whole property off to an investment company that may not have the same rules or would they have the same rules if you sold this a year later to an investment vehicle they could rent the manager apartment out correct uh, and not worry about occupancy or by filing it as a 40b would that be prevented to the next owner because there's nothing about filing it as a 40b that says you couldn't sell it a week later correct so what, what happens if you go through the 
40B process, um, we end up with a comprehensive permit that's issued by the town. There's also a regulatory agreement with the state agency. So all of those type of rules and requirements are built into those documents. If it's sold by us a year from now or somebody else 10 years from now, all those stay in place. But not the manager's apartment? Or if, it's your... built, if it's built into the permit as a requirement, then it would. Yeah. Yeah. I have nothing against even having affordable housing right here, right across the street from our house. Okay? But I do have something against that is 45 feet in the air. There is nothing on this island that is 45 feet in the air that people live in. There's nothing like this. What I'm asking you is, why can't you change this and make it a community that has the Nantucket in mind? It's critical mass to be able to have an on-site manager. If you're down at 20 or 30 units, you just can't build that into the pro forma. And you know that would probably be more in line with the unit having count a, if you go down to that. Having height. an on-site manager is no excuse for no, building no, something else. No. We were totally probably out of scale. Nantucket does not have large-scale apartment buildings, and it shouldn't. People come to Nantucket to get away. They want to rent a cottage. We have a lot of rental houses on Nantucket. I've never heard anyone say there's not a place to rent. Housing for employees is a different story, and I understand that as most islanders do. We just sold our house because of that kind of thing. When I hear of 300 and some houses going in and 140 houses going in or whatever it is, I think of the number of cars it's bringing on, like 300 cars probably, the amount of electricity it needs, 300 additional cars on the roads every summer. Um, how much electricity does the each house need? How much uh, sewage is it going to put into the plant? What I've seen in my building career is uh, Nantucket tried to slow development down. And every time they tried to slow it down, people that had lots that thought they'd build a vacation home in the future built sooner than they planned because they were afraid that, like the Cape, who had a moratorium, they, they were afraid that they wouldn't be able to build. Save our surf side! <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.